Usama Dakdok was born and raised in Egypt. He speaks Arabic fluently. He has translated the Quran from Arabic into perfect English word for word with his team. It took him over four years to do that. You can order a copy of the Quran that he has translated word for word at thestraightway.org, thestraightway.org. He was never a Muslim. His daddy planted Baptist churches all over Egypt, but he was indoctrinated, if you will, taught Islam in the Egyptian schools. So he knows it backwards and forwards. My next guest is Sharam Hadian. He was born in Iran. His father was a high-ranking military officer, and they fled Iran six weeks before the fall of the Shah. Today, Sharam is no longer a Muslim. In fact, he is a Christian pastor, and he is calling the church, as is Usama, to understand the Trojan horse of Islam. Faith, spiritual values, moral issues, government, economy, education, work, responsibility. What we think about these depends on our worldview. Now, VCY America presents Worldview Weekend Radio with Brandon House. Welcome. Sure, uh, not Sharam, but Usama Dakdok and Andy Woods are in the wings and will be my guest today. Sharam was going to come on with us, but he had a temperature of 103 yesterday. It's down to 99 now. So be pl praying for uh, Sharam, if you will. But Usama and Andy Woods will join me in just a minute. Uh, Andy Woods is going to be my guest today on the topic of, and we will talk about it, uh, is Islam and other false religions, is Islam and other false religions a spiritual threat to the church? A minister um, on video last week at a, at a discernment type conference said that Islam is not, not a spiritual threat to the church. Is it? We'll discuss that among other breaking news today. CNN today has listed two WVW TV partners Truth in Love, Sharam Hadian, and The Straight Way, Usama Dakdok, as hate groups among such groups as the KKK. Folks, you heard me right. CNN today has listed, with the, I guess the help of the Southern Poverty Law Center, they have listed racist groups. And among them, they include two of our broadcast partners, Sharam Hadian, and you saw a Dak Doc, whose programs we carry, whose TV, whose TV shows we produce from our t TV studio. I believe you will also find among there uh, some other people uh, who may also be involved with VCY. I think, I'm not positive, but I think, I'll have to go back through the list, but I think Matt Staver's group might be on there. It's a rather lengthy list. Some of the groups I don't agree with them per se on all theological issues. Some areas we do agree theologically. Some of them I don't agree with some of the things they've done in the past in the word of faith or NAR types they've worked with in the past. But they're not hate groups. Uh, they're saying in many regards some of the things we're saying about uh, same-sex marriage, abortion. Uh, and, of course, our emphasis has been Islam. I don't know that a lot of the religious right has had the emphasis on exposing Islam as we have. But even some of the groups that are on there, while I may not agree with a, 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 some areas of, of their theology or their methodology or some of their what I think are more ecumenical things they've done, they're not hate groups, okay? They're not. But today, this is how Usama and Sharam are being painted. And folks, I predicted, I'm not boasting here, but I just want again to show you the, this is what we do here. We predict these trends and what's coming. And I predicted in my book, Grave Influence, in 2008, that many so-called Christians, as well as a false church, would do this. On page 84, I write, a remnant 
is the group of Christians who stand firm in their biblical convictions, even in the face of persecution and ridicule, it is often met with hostility not only by the world, but by members of the postmodern dominant false church. And then I go on to say that in Matthew 10:36 declares, a man's enemies will be even of his own household. Page 84 of Grave Influence. And that was two, that book came out in uh, late 2008. I wrote it in 2008. I think maybe come out in 2009. And then on page two of Religious Trojan Horse, Religious Trojan Horse, I wrote, it is from this growing false church that I believe Christians are going to receive a great deal of persecution. For this reason, we must equip and train the church to understand that persecution is to be expected for true believers who contend for the gospel per second Timothy 3.12, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Page 11 of Religious Trojan Horse that came out in 2012, I said, quote, the salt persecution and censorship now taking place in America is coming largely from self-professing Christians. I have a file of emails from Christian leaders who through the years have criticized me for speaking about false teachers. Some of these are highly visible authors or Christian radio and television hosts. Many have the public reputation of being bold and committed to truth, but in reality, they are very shrewd about the issues they will address. If an issue will impact the bottom line or upset their good old boy club, the truth becomes a casualty. I have personally witnessed many evangelical, many of evangelicalism's well-known personalities clam up when a biblical stand might negatively impact their book and DVD sales, speaking invitations, attendance of their conferences, donors to their organizations, or how many stations carry their program. Is it any wonder, I write on page 11 and now page 12 of Religious Trojan Horse from 2012, is it any wonder that a religious Trojan horse has slipped into the camp of evangelicalism when many perceived watchmen will only warn the church when it does not impact their bottom line, personal well-being, or reputation. May neither you nor I allow the love of money to cause us to stray from proclaiming the truth, as 1 Timothy 6.10 warns. And then I also go on on page 359 of Religious Trojan Horse to state, when religious leaders are called out for giving a platform, to those serving Satan and preaching another Jesus and another gospel, they often turn on those speaking biblical truth and bring persecution on the very ones trying to guard the church as we're commanded to do in Acts 20, 28 to 31. Folks, religious Trojan horse, grave influence, I told you this was coming. And I think the evangelical right is, is just as guilty for seeing that people like Usama and Sharam and others end up on this list by saying that we hate Muslims because we've spoken truth about a jihadi imam, Yasser Qadi, involved in an interfaith dialogue with a well-known apologist. And so when so-called evangelical right members accuse us of hating Muslims or having a political gospel, which is 100% lie, pushing so-called conspiracies that are actually 100% facts, or say that we have a political hatred of Muslims, this is pushing and giving credibility of the Muslim and Marxist narrative that sets up Christians for persecution. And I watched a video last night where a well-known apologist said, speaking about Usama and myself, that we have a political gospel and we have political hatred for the Muslims. And we said, starting June 7th, when this news, when we broke this on a national level, that the words of some of these people, well-known Christians among certain groups, the words of these Christians, their videos will be used by the Muslims to set up Christians for persecution. That's exactly where this video clip was. It was in a pro-Muslim video using the words of a Christian apologist to, who was attacking me by name and Usama by name and using the terms of the left that were, that were involved in hatred. So, folks, please understand. The evangelical right is aiding and giving credibility to the persecution of Christians who are speaking biblical truth, whether they know it or not. And in fact, we have warned of a five-stage process for setting up the persecution of Christians. One Pick your target. Well, it's biblical Christians. Pick your target. Two, vilify the target. Well, isn't that what's happening now? The target's being vilified, biblical Christians, by both those on the left and the right, even by so-called even by so-called Christians themselves. They're vilifying with the very 
uh, rhetoric of the left. So pick your target, biblical Christians. Vilify the target, biblical Christians. Marginalize the target. Yusama, uh, this morning I called you and I said, Yusama, the CNN articles come out. You are listed among other uh, groups. Uh, sadly, you are listed among uh, racist groups. Uh, you are listed among them, along with our friend uh, Sharam Hadian, as a hater. Um, you want to comment on this development today? Yeah, absolutely. Especially when uh, yesterday CBS also have put me in as a hate group in uh, Florida. And uh, it's amazing. Brother Brennan, they call us a hateful group because we are reading what is written in the Quran. Because I'm telling the American people what Muhammad taught the Muslim in the Hadith. And I think their technique is very wicked. Because not only the one that listed us as a hate group, they actually give my location. You know, I'm not a guy who does this ministry in, in secret. Uh, this will go with your uh, opening statement. They actually want to make us a target by some Muslims to be put to death, not just to be persecuted. Uh, ministers like me normally will not give their location where they live. They will not give the location where they're speaking at. They will not give their telephone number online. But I am the weirdest guy you can ever see on planet Earth. Not only I have retired where I'm speaking, but actually, if you Google my name, and as you have done it before, just you saw me, you found everything about me. They actually know where I am right now, where I'm speaking next Sunday, and where I'm going to be speaking next month. Literally, uh, my cell phone number is online. My full information is online. And we have nothing to hide. I have zero fear. But when CBS yesterday and CNN today telling us, you saw me of Venice, Florida, that is wicked act. If I have a good lawyer, I can literally sue them and make uh, big bucks. But that's not what we're here because there's nothing really I'm hiding. But I want to add something uh, important, Brother Brennan. When we talk about we are a hateful, yesterday I have a newspaper, big newspaper from Florida, contacted me to get my side of the story. I said, sure, how many sentences? She said, five sentences. I'm allowed to uh, clear up my name and my ministry in five sentences. I said, wonderful. One of the sentences I get to her is a quotation of Muhammad. When Muhammad said, he has been commanded by law to engage in war with people. And I told Hold them, right there. The word people Hold right there, Yusama. We'll be right back American. after this break. Be right back. Being a Situation Room member has its benefits, such as being able to live stream the Friday night, November 3rd, Saturday, November 4th, Understanding the Times Worldview Weekend. This year's theme is Understanding and Preparing for the Terroristic Threats Against Your Family, Community, and Nation. Keynote speakers will include John Gondola, former FBI counterterrorism expert. Chris Gobitz, who went undercover as a convert of Islam to penetrate the Council for American Islamic Relations and come out with over 12,000 pages that led to the writing of the New York Times bestseller that's been promoted by Sean Hannity entitled Muslim Mafia. We'll also have with us Clint Clemens and Jason Pratt, who both own, respectively, their own security companies. They'll teach you how to be prepared for a live active shooter scenario. What would you do if you were in a church and there was an active shooter situation? Have you taught your family and children how to respond? What about if they're at school or on the college or university campus? What about if they're at a mall? Did you know that the April 5th Washington Times article said that ISIS was calling on its followers to carry out terrorist attacks in indoor malls, swimming pools, college and university campuses. Are you prepared? Do you know the difference between cover and concealment? We'll teach you basic things that you need to know to increase your chances of surviving an active shooter scenario. Again, that's just one of the benefits of being a Situation Room member. You also have access to over $125,000 in retail price of eBooks, audiobooks, TV shows, DVDs, conference DVDs, Bible software, and much more. That's right. All of that's available to you as a Situation Room member. For instance, all of our Ozark Worldview Weekends are archived in the Situation Room for you to watch on demand. And every new TV show we produce each and every week eventually rolls into the Situation Room for members only. All the radio shows I've done since 2007 are archived inside the Situation Room. You can join now for just $9.99 a month. $99 a year or $149 for two years. Again, join now and you get to live stream the Understanding the Times Worldview Weekend 
coming up Friday night, November 3rd, Saturday, November 4th, 2017. Join now at situationroom.net forward slash join, situationroom.net forward slash join. Welcome back. Glad you're with us, Worldview Radio. Our website, worldviewradio.com. We'll have a brand new article up this afternoon, how Marxist, Muslims, media, and malfeasance of evangelicals are aiding the five-step plan for persecution of biblical Christians. It'll be an article on our website this afternoon at worldviewradio.com. Uh, I'll go back to you, Sama, here, but quickly, uh, uh, the list by CNN from the Southern Poverty Law Center include these hate groups, the Ku Klux Klan of Alabama, the Ku Klux Klan of Arkansas, the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan of Arkansas. I mean, uh, this is where our buddy is listed, uh, Usama and Sharam, the American Nazi Party is listed with them, uh, Jihad Watch, our buddy uh, Robert Spencer is listed, um, you have uh, Act for America, which I think is Brigitte Gabriel. Um, I, I mean, there's a lot of folks on here who, who, who are all, they're just telling the truth. They're not hate groups. And uh, yet, folks, again, this is the strategy. We've warned you about it, identifying, marginalizing, vilifying, legalizing their, their persecution, and then normalizing the persecution. It's smelling like the 1930s all over again. And sadly, just as in Germany, there was a, a, a what was called the German Christians that, that went along with it. There are so-called American Christians, both on the right and the left, that are aiding this. And many of the folks who are doing it on the right don't even know they're doing it because they don't have a comprehensive biblical worldview. They have, in many cases, some orthodoxy, but they don't really have an orthopraxy. They don't have a comprehensive biblical worldview. They don't understand Islam. Many of them are one-trick ponies. They have one topic they speak on. They beat it to death. That's all they know. They don't know anything else. They don't want to learn anything else. And when many, many people have reached out to them, including Usama Dakdak and others, to say, hey, can we educate you on this? They say, no, we don't want to know about why you're opposed to things like interfaith dialogue. They've actually said, no, I will talk to you about anything but not interfaith dialogue. Well, how can you then educate people? How can they then have a good ortho? Doxy that leads to good orthopraxy. How can they have a comprehensive biblical worldview? So sadly, even some on the right now are aiding in this narrative because of their ignorance, which is going to again set up real Christians, eventually themselves, for persecution. So Usama, CBS, or somebody called you to get a comment. They allowed you five statements, five sentences, and you began to try to uh, use, I guess, the words of Muhammad himself in that mm -hmm. uh, article, correct? Sure. Absolutely. And uh, all what I started quoting for her, I said, write down, Muhammad said, I have been commanded to engage in war against people. And I, if you don't mind, put between parentheses, people here, Americans, until they have, until they say that there is no God except Allah, and I am Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. And the moment I finished that sentence, she said to me, well, I'm sorry, I cannot write anything about religion. So I said, you are not going to write in my five sentence why they call me a hate speaker because I am reading what Muhammad said and what Muhammad did. I said, well, let me give you another verse from the Quran. And, and I start quoting her to her some of the verses of the Quran which teach hate. And she said, sir, I'm sorry. I cannot write anything about religion. I said, and you are just another stupid, useful idiot because that is the problem. You are a fake news, as Mr. Trump said last a couple of days. You are not to report the truth. You have smeared me by calling me a hate speaker with a hate ministry. And you do not know why I am called a hate speaker of a hate ministry. Because I'm quoting what Muhammad said and did and what Allah orders a Muslim to do, which is killing you, killing your husband to rape you and your daughter and your granddaughter in their future. And you will not report what is written in the Quran because you are another coward newspaper, as I have always seen you liberals all over this country. And that is the problem, Brother Brennan. We are hated because we speak the truth. I said, this is what Allah said, this is what Muhammad said, and they don't want to hear that. All what they want to hear is, let's all get along, let's have tolerance, and love the Muslims, and bring the Muslims in America in the millions, and have interface meetings all over our churches, and we just all go get along and hold hands and sing kumbaya. And that is how you're not going to be called a hate speaker or a hate minister. And by, by the way, Usama, you were canceled along with Sharam speaking at a church because of your opposition to the interfaith dialogue that took place here in town. You were unscheduled. 
uh, briefly, so we can get Andy back in the conversation. Briefly, when you had a phone conference with that elder board, quote, elder board, I'm not sure they really qualify as elders if this is the way they're going to act. But when you had a phone conference with that elder board, why did they not want you to come speak anymore? What did they say? Well, it's an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes, I believe, conversation because uh, I am not into this uh, – because, because we call people – they're wrong for what they're doing, period. If, if I have an agreement, it's okay to go with uh, Mr. Smith and Mr. Joe and Mr. Baba and whatever names we have out there, then I'll be welcome to the church. You know what? I care less about speaking, another speaking engagement in any of these liberal churches, no matter what their names are, or no matter what the position is, but I have to obey God more than to obey man, period. So is the fact that you called out the interfaith dialogue here in town, that's why you were canceled? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, it is so unbelievable. And by the way, if this has been done by some other people, like some other ministers, like Rick Warren, they are against it. But because it's done by one of their own, then they are for it. And that is showing you the level of hypocrisy, sadly, among those who are so 